Friends, the professor is here with another episode of The Science Of. In today's episode, we will be discussing the science of the locust shells in Gears of War 4. Now, I think it should go without saying that this that this content will contain some spoilers for the Gears of War story, so you've been warned. Now, let's just run this down. Oh, and quick announcement before we get this class in session. I will be finally getting back to uh, the Master Chief Collection. I will try to I will try to pump out a lot more, just a crap ton of videos for you guys, considering I've put it on so long of a hiatus. And I will be doing some more Science of episodes of Ruby, if you guys would want. And um, also let me know what other Science of videos I should make. You know, it doesn't always have to be exclusively video games. It could be any form of, it could be any form of science fiction, um, fantasy and magic. I'm not so 100% sure on. I mean, I know a lot of people were, were, will hate me for doing that kind of stuff. So, um, so choose wisely. I guess that is the moral of the story. Choose wisely. Anyhow, let's, let's just get this class in session and let's give a little context of how these shells formed. Again, spoilers. So, let's go back to the events to the climax of Gears of War 3. That involving the launching of Adam Phoenix's emulsion countermeasure. Um, basically, af after releasing the countermeasure to, to combat the emulsion parasite, causing a mass pandemic of lambency across the planet of Sira, the planet that Gears of War, where the events of Gears of War take place, the, it not only affects the current lambent, but also the locust, given and how that works in a, that alone is, um, is a long story. So I guess I should say this, this science of episode is going to be kind of a, kind of a long one. But then again, this is just mostly talking. I use this as more of like a, like a, I don't know, podcast. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Um, so first of all, the locusts are. I'll ju I'm just gonna sum it up ba briefly. These lo the locusts were basically a failed experiment to try, to try to genetically modify humans to become more resilient to lambency and. The end result was not only making them more susceptible, but very, as you can see, heavily, heavily mutated. After the incident and the New Hope testing testing facility, they had to completely, they, no pun intended, bury every last trace of the failure. And, you know, over time, you know, the first generation of, it, of test subjects were the sires, the second test subjects would eventually become the Locust Horde. Uh, the creatures include, including many of the drones, grenadiers, uh, you know, the, base, the basic locusts. Um, the basic locusts we have fought throughout the games. And along with many other creatures from the Hollow. Um, the subterranean, the network of subterranean tunnels that the locusts live under and have have settled. But anyway, uh, that aside, basically the locusts did have the emulsion, already had some form of, or um, the emulsion parasite within within their within their body structures in infecting their their system, which is why they were. And they will, f and it was actually that um, threat of lambency that eventually led to the locust attacking the surf, the surface world on Emergence Day. Um, but with that aside, let's get down to what um, also what emulsion is. Emulsion for the first three games was the primary, was the heavily sought after fuel that was in great abundance with within the world of Sira. And two very powerful governments in particular wanted to control it. The Coalition of Ordered Governments, or the COG, the, gov the, um, 
the side you fight for in throughout the um, throughout the games and the in the Union of Independent Republics or the UIR both sides were actually inspired by the USA and the USSR it's like if the cold if like you know gunfire was actually exchanged during the cold war and but for Sierra, it was known as the Pendulum Wars, a war that lasted nearly a hundred years for this very sought-after fuel source. That's how valuable um, emulsion was. But nobody knew that emulsion was also a parasite. You know, emulsion what, is what was causing mass lambency, it, and it couldn't only affect uh, the locust, it could affect humans, too. And over time, lambency began ready, spreading rapidly, infecting not only the locusts, but also humans. Particularly, you know, human settlements that were, that were built around the refining and, and distribution of emulsion. So, over time, this got so bad that, that eventually Adam Phoenix was able to develop a countermeasure to the parasite. The resulting parasites, you know, though, um, all the emulsion within Sierra was was destroyed. The lambents without, were practically sentient forms of the, were just shells for the emulsion parasites to use, and the locusts already had, had the parasite within them. But, here's something interesting. They may have had a the locust may have had emulsion within them. That's how they, that's how their particular mutation happens. But they didn't just disintegrate like many other lambent. Instead, their bodies formed these hard crystalline structures, which you can see on the screen. This is those crystals, and it's interesting because. Why wouldn't the locusts, like, shrivel up or just turn into skeletons? Rather than just forming these these strange structures. It might have something to do with two factors. The first factor I'm going to get into is... Um, first of all, just the sheer level of emulsion infection in, one, a human to a locust and three a full-on lambent let's start with humans now obviously the emulsion countermeasure is to is meant to to kill off every last trace of, of the emulsion parasite within living cells depending on on a human's level of infection they will either also be killed or just simply have the, the parasite purged from them there is a certain level in which you know, a human will get sick from emulsion known as rust lung. You know, traces were began to pop up in the events of Gears of War 2 af after... Yeah, I'm not going to get too much... I shouldn't get too much into detail about that one. That's Otherwise, we'll be here for like an hour. Um, but yeah, cases like rust lung, which is like to be... Like the sort of just red flag that the person is about to become... A lambent. A human is about to become a lambent. As for, you know, as for the locust, like I said, they were basically mutated. And emulsion was part of the mutation process. But given how heavily modified their their physical bodies have been compared to a regular, to a to a normal to a normal humanoid. Um, it's not emulsion alone that was you in the process that was used in the mutation process. It was also the um, it was likely also the locusts' surprising expertise in genetic modification. These guys were incredibly adept at at genetics. It was, in fact, they were able. That's how they were able to breed their brumox. Those 
humongous bipedal beasts that that we um, had our fair share of tussles with, with throughout the games. And you know, likely many other many other creatures. As so, it's not so the um, so the emuls the emulsion parasites along with the heavily uh, heavily modified genet gen physical and genetic structure of the locusts likely contributed to a to a completely different reaction yeah and it's worth mentioning that the locusts actually didn't die they almost went into hibernation a form of suspended animation once the parasite was purged they the crystalline structures began forming but there is another more likely theory I have based on based upon the uh, physical attributions of not only these crystals which have a a yellow um, coloring to them but also the um, the strange orange substance in which that in which many uh, swarms spawn from from the ju for the juvies it's the orange sludge that that is in the pods as they are processed as you know captured humans are processed into swarm juvies and also what is in the nests where juvie where juvies are go and eventually metamorphosize into drones another video uh the process for that is another video for another time but let's just but it might also have to do with a very with a hard tested and hard proven process of evolution that was discovered by Charles Darwin. Natural selection. Now, typically, natural so it's how natural selection, in layman's terms, it works like this. Um, organisms with favorable traits for their environment are more likely to survive in that environment. Now, at... Now you might be asking yourself, how could any lam lambent organ, how can any of the lambent microorganisms survive the emulsion countermeasure? It was built to kill every last one of them. Well, to that I go to the to the growing issue of what is known as superbugs, bacteria that have become resilient to to different forms of antibiotics, and a similar thing might happen with these, with the emulsion parasite. After not, you know, after a very, very vast majority of the other parasite was killed, was killed in the countermeasure, there were a select few that actually managed to survive, and it might be the emulsion, the emulsion, the emulsion microbes within the locusts, as because as I said, the way the way they mutated via emulsion was vastly different than just straight out lambency um you know again possibly attributed to the to the locusts knowledge in in genetic engineering or or simply just due to the to the circumstances of the mutation we i don't have any real sources on on telling on, on telling me the, the exact circumstances and Really, I doubt this is really this is really gonna get the credit of most really science advocate people on the basis that I'm just going only off of a fic off a fictional world with a fictional parasite. But bear with me, I'm just doing this for fun, and I think science is cool. Anyway, back back to the um, back to the emulsion. So that particular uh, strand of emul of the emulsion parasite could have. Could have ins could have found a way to adapt. These crystal and structures only formed after the after the countermeasure, and and according to to Marcus Phoenix and many other cogs present during the during the po during the post war uh, gathering of the locust bodies, the crystals were all but indestructible, and the and many of them and many of not only the locust foot soldiers but many of the of their creatures, the corpsers, the the brumax, and many others were encased in the in these in these crystal in these
these crystalline structures as well. And it could have also attributed to the to the uh, locust entering some form of suspended animation with these in, with these incredibly strong shells. Their bodies would not would not be immediately ravaged by by any form of time and could be preserved. Many anim many animals actually have been known to quote unquote come back from the dead. Certain species of frog have been able to just end up end up completely frozen with little to no brain activity and a complete organ shut down, effectively making it dead, but once the spring comes and the ice thaws, uh, the frog can, is defrosted and is, and just goes about its normal business. It essentially, it essentially resurrects. A similar thing may have happened to the locusts, at least the one, at least the original locust. And then there's and then there is also the question of the process of their of their metamorphosis, like like many insects. And just how they were able to burst out of those out of those crystallized cocoons. That might also have something to do with that orange sludge. It could be a new it could be evolutionarily evolutionarily connected to the emulsion. I say this, and how this could happen in only the strain, only the pro, only a uh, two and a half decades, is, well, let's just cover micro and macro evolution to explain this. Micro evolution is basically small changes over time, you know, small adaptations within a species. Macro evolution is basically a ton of micro evolution happening over a very, very long period of time. Now, how is the, how are these two able to be uh, observed? Microevolution, more specifically, is because is done with single-celled organisms that are able to re reproduce very fast and re mostly mostly due to asexual reproduction, basically making genetic copies of themselves. So it's likely the strand of emulsion that that survived the countermeasure eventually survived to. To recreate itself, and this might be the new strand that that's used to create that has created the swarm. And it looks and it seems as though the scions, which are the newly evolved locust, have figured this out and are now use are now using them to create a new army, rebuilding the locust horde. And we see it's not only just the foot soldiers. We saw in Gears of War 4 that even the creatures such as the Brumac came back after a, after a period of time. And if there are any other of the orig creatures from the, orig the original Locust Horde that have gotten this, this, this new strength, well... Let's just say the Gears of War 5 trailer that came out recently definitely shows that Sierra is in for a whole new generation of living hell. These cre- whatever- whatever this new strand of, paras of parasitoid is, it's definitely an improvement from, from the original emulsion. And, and with that, and with it now working in combination with with the new locust horde and their desire to rebuild build their empire including get finding a new ruler i'll get into that again getting into that another time it definitely seems like that that the next gen that our new generation of gears are are in for are are in for a whole new kind of fight one even and from the looks of things, one even the old cog, cog never had the face. So anyway, that concludes this episode of the science of. I know this got, this was kind of long and kind of boring in terms of a video because there's no real visual stimulation. But I figured this would be, it would at least be something nice to uh, kind of listen to, um, to get get the uh, get the old gray matter working. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I, again, let me know what other science of topics you want me to cover. 
Um, let me know if you guys actually want me to cover some more Gears. Of, let me know if you guys want to, want me to cover more Gears of War lore and like you know my my own personal theories on certain aspects. And I believe that is all there is to say. So this can.